Okay, hello, my name is Paul Murley, and I'm a graduate student at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And I'm presenting some work that I did along with my colleagues listed here on this slide on WebSocket adoption and the landscape of the real-time web. So we know that there are many applications on the modern web that require real-time updates that don't fit neatly into the client-server model require servers to be able to send data to clients at will. From stock price updates, sports score updates, collaborative document editing, online gaming, and so on. And one of the use cases that got us interested in it that we observed from some previous work that we did was cryptojacking, where we observed JavaScript code that would establish WebSocket connections to central servers and use those connections to facilitate mining cryptocurrency in unsuspecting users' browsers. So we know there are use cases for real-time technologies that are good. We know there are use cases that are not so good. We haven't seen this area empirically studied and measured, and that was the goal of this work, was to go out and look at how these technologies are being used in the wild and help to shed some light on the ways in which the ecosystem might be improved. So we picked a few specific technologies to look at here, uh, by no means exhaustive, but the first that we picked was HTTP polling or HTTP streaming, which is sort of the earliest real-time web technology. We also looked at server sent events, which are offered through the JavaScript event source API and allow, allow for JavaScript code to register event listeners and react to uh, server messages in real time. And then, of course, the main focus of this study was WebSockets. WebSockets were standardized in 2011, so they've been around for a full decade, by no means a new technology at this point. Um, they allow for full duplex bi-directional communication between clients and servers. Uh, so clients and servers can send messages to each other at will once they've established a WebSocket connection. Just very briefly, some technologies we didn't study in this work. We didn't look at all at browser plugins like Flash and Silverlight, which have largely been removed from browsers. We didn't look at WebRTC, which seems to be used in more of a peer-to-peer real-time role on the web as opposed to the client-server model. We also didn't look at HTTP2 server push, which is more of an optimization feature than a true real-time bidirectional uh, communication mechanism. But interestingly, HTTP2 server push has been uh, well, Google has come out and said that they're going to discontinue um, support for it in Chromium as of this year. And they said they were going to do that due to just a lack of usage and the high cost of maintaining that code in their code base. And so I think that's a good example of why it's important to keep track of how these technologies are being used and how much they're being used because it has an effect on whether they uh, should stay in browsers, get removed from browsers, and um, what changes need to be made to them. So um, in regard to WebSockets specifically, some questions that we had starting off to guide our research. How much are WebSockets being used as opposed to some of these other technologies like polling or server sent events? And is WebSocket usage still increasing or has it leveled off or is it decreasing? What are WebSockets being used for? What types of websites are using WebSockets? Are they being used efficiently? Are they being used securely? Are developers following best practices when they use WebSockets? These are some of the questions that guided our research. And so to address these, we gathered a data set. We had a crawler based on Chromium driven by the DevTools protocol. We had a main crawl of the Tranco top million websites where we remained on each website for 45 seconds. And then we supplemented that with a crawl of a random sample of 4,000 websites from the top million. Each of those we stayed on for a full hour. And the purpose of that supplementary crawl was primarily to help us study HTTP polling and some of the optimizations on HTTP polling which hold connections open for long periods of time. So in Firefox, for example, you can hold a HTTP connection open for up to five minutes. So 45 seconds would be insufficient to watch several of those connections get open as polling has happened. So we added that supplementary crawl. And in both of these crawls, we collected every resource load, all the metadata on resource loads, uh, WebSocket frames that were sent across the wire, and all of the server sent event 
traffic. And we've released our data set and our crawling tool. So uh, we would love it if you got a chance to check that out. So first of all, this is a graph that shows what we found in our data set as far as the frequency at which HTTP polling and WebSockets appeared across the top 1 million. You may notice right away, one of the things that's not on this graph is server sent events, which we said was the third technology we studied. It's because we found that server sent events were not used much at all relative to these two other technologies. In fact, less than a percent of sites in the top million are using the event source API, according to our data set. And we don't have hard evidence as to why that is. We do have a hypothesis, which is um, based on the fact that service and events still are not offered in Internet Explorer, and they weren't offered in Microsoft Edge until Edge converted over to using Chromium as its base within the past couple of years. And that is and has been a significant market share of browser usage, so it makes sense that developers might not want to use a technology that's, that's not universally supported. We also see from this graph that HTTP polling is still significantly more common than WebSockets. And that's especially true at higher ranks. And we generally expect sites to be more complex at higher ranks, and that higher complexity comes out in our data set in more HTTP polling. WebSocket usage we find to be pretty consistently used across the top million. About 7% of sites in the, the top million websites use WebSockets. So what types of sites are using WebSockets? What are these 7% of sites that are using them? So we list here in the table on the left the top categories of websites that are using WebSockets. So the most common type of site that is using WebSocket, or I should say the type of site that is using WebSocket most commonly, is stocks websites, trading websites. And this makes sense because it's a pretty tailor-made use case for WebSockets. We're getting stock price updates. It's frequent updates coming from server to client. A WebSocket fits that use case pretty much on the button. And so we see that more than half of stocks websites are using WebSockets. The table on the right shows the most common third-party WebSocket services that we observed in our data set. And you can see that these are dominated by two main use cases, chat, and then tracking, and analytics. And uh, chat being the most common use case, we saw that commonly pages will have a customer service chat that automatically pops up when you visit a page. And these are almost all implemented using WebSockets to facilitate that chat. And then tracking as well seems to be an industry that has really leveraged WebSockets to make it, its tools more efficient and less conspicuous. And we saw that commonly in our data set as well. So this graph is, is intended to sort of give you a little characterization of the data that was actually flowing through these connections and how that data looks. So we're graphing the number of server messages per connection relative to the number of client messages in that same connection. So the dot size here just indicates how many connections are at a particular point. And we see that most connections have more server messages than client messages sent as part of the connection, which makes sense given that one of the main purposes of WebSockets is to allow servers to send messages to clients without clients having to send messages to servers, right? We do see some points below the X equals Y line as well. And this comes from a variety of different use cases, but one that I'll just note is the tracking that I was just talking about. So these analytics scripts, uh, session replay scripts, whatever they are, are sending user data at some fixed interval to a server. That could be mouse position, it could be keystrokes, it could be big parts of the DOM even that are being sent uh, via JSON uh, through WebSockets to some analytics server. And so that accounts for some of the, the blue that you see below the X equals Y line on this graph. So we also asked how WebSocket usage is changing over time. And we pulled some data from the HTTP archive to give us a historical perspective on WebSocket usage. 
And unfortunately, we couldn't get it going all the way back to standardization in 2011. We could only get the last three to four years. But even from this data, it seems clear that WebSocket usage is, our adoption is slowing. Right? We're seeing uh, this graph come to sort of a pl plateau, and we don't have hard evidence as to why that's happening. We do have some hypotheses, one of which is the increase in HTTP2 usage on the web and uh, the allowing for multiplexing of connections so that is going to make polling more efficient which may, may make it less uh, critical to use something like a WebSocket. But clearly WebSocket adoption has been slowing over the past two to three years. So just to give you an example of some of the misconfigurations we found, and a little bit of background first, WebSockets don't get the same protections that scripts do from the same origin policy. So there's nothing preventing some third-party script from making a connection to a WebSocket and authenticating with a cookie that's already stored in the browser. So what WebSocket servers should do in general is check the origin header that a browser tacks on um, when it goes to make a WebSocket connection and ensure that that origin is uh, indicating that the connection is coming from a trusted script. But we found that about three quarters of WebSocket servers in our data set don't check the origin header. Now that sounds really bad, um, but in most of these cases, if it's a tracking or an analytics server, they're not necessarily concerned about where the connection is coming from, but it's still an indicator that in you know, the majority of these servers out there, this best practice is not being followed. Uh, people are not checking origin headers. And one possible reason for that is that up until, well, this is, this is some documentation for socket.io, which is a popular WebSocket library. And here we can see that as it's describing how to handle cores, it's noting that all domains are authorized by default. So this is for origin header checks. It's not checking at all. It is fully open by default. And this was actually updated in November 2020 after we'd already submitted our work. But it just goes to show that um, documentation is important here and updating these libraries to facilitate secure by default WebSocket usage is something that I think will improve the lack of origin header checking and similar configuration issues moving forward. We also did an experiment where we took 400 of the websites that we observed using real-time notifications, like push notifications with WebSockets, and we just ran them on dedicated VMs for a full month and just watched what they did. And we observed that 32 of these sites delivered malicious payloads, a total of 123 malicious payloads. And you can see in the table what those payloads are. Um, anything from tech support scams to adware to outright uh, malicious files were delivered via these WebSockets. And we're not saying that WebSockets allow these attacks where they wouldn't have been possible before. Right? You could put in a link before and have users download things. But they do make it uh, more difficult to detect and more efficient to do. Right? So if you are just linking someone to malware on a page, it's going to be easier for browser extensions to detect and block that than if you're delivering something over a WebSocket. So a few takeaways before I wrap up. Uh, WebSocket adoption appears to be stagnating, as we showed in the past few years. Developers continue to favor HTTP polling over WebSockets. Uh, we think better documentation, secure by default, libraries are going to improve WebSocket best practices and thus WebSocket security in the wild. And uh, new real-time technologies are going to be used to improve bad things that are happening on the web. So tracking, malicious content delivery, things like that. And so we think it's just important to keep that in mind as we are developing solutions for WebSockets and developing other technologies for the real-time web. So thank you very much. That's all I have. Uh, there's my email address if you want to get in touch with questions, comments, or concerns. I appreciate your time, and I hope you get a chance to check out the paper.